is Yolita and Nicholas and we are here in Burlington, Vermont, well actually South Burlington, Vermont. And we this is the first episode for Wellness and Wealth podcast. And I own a spa, brilliant massage and skin. I'm also involved in real estate investments and I've always been passionate about well healthness and wellness and and uh, wealth and how about yourself so my name is nicholas um, i'm a born and raised vermonter i own a managed service provider company here in burlington vermont it and vt um, most people probably are like what the heck is a managed service provider so what we do is we are your outsource it department we manage your technology we help with technological um, decisions, but we also help manage cybersecurity. We have a security operations center, and everything from high level CIO level planning to I can't print. I need help um, swapping my cell phone. And we decided that this would be a nice um, topic to talk about uh, health and wellness and wealth and finances because. You know, those are integral parts in our life. Uh, if we have one without the other, it's not that great. Of course, health, I feel like, comes above everything. Uh, but also, if you don't have money, you don't always can be healthy. You know, if you cannot afford uh, good food uh, or medical care, um, that's where, you know, finances come into play. So uh, we want to look in our life as a whole, how to be the most successful in those aspects and also how to not burn out, how to not ruin your health or relationship while building wealth and uh, financial success. It's kind of like... Uh, you know a house um, if you own real estate or you're investing in real estate what's the point of you know doing a lot of renovations inside the house if you have a, a poor foundation or a poor roof you know if, if you don't have a good roof you don't have a good foundation with a, a, a building you, you really don't have anything and that's kind of like with the personal relationship you know if you don't have that foundation if you don't have that base what's it really all for so at the end of the day you want to be successful at business. Everybody wants to be successful. But what does that success come at? You know, does that come at the cost of a personal relationship, uh, uh, maybe a professional relationship, or, or just a friendship? Is it really worth that sacrifice to become successful if you don't also have that foundation of wellness? Uh, yes, and, and I've seen, you know, people and um, watched even other people's YouTube videos online of successful entrepreneurs that say, you know, a lot of their marriages failed because of um, working too much. And sometimes that will happen, you know, people grow apart and things can be ine inevitable. But sometimes that happens because of not knowing how to balance better. And, um, you know, I, I have to say, like, uh, balance is not always possible when you are in that season of very you know, of building of wealth and or a business, sometimes it can be very demanding. But I think it's important to understand that it's a season and then, you know, then communicate with the spouse, but then also make t still make time because guess what? The world will not fall apart if you uh, take half a day, a couple times a week to spend time, go to the gym, uh, do something for your mind so you're not so irritable and not, uh, you know, angry uh, because your temper is short because you're so stressed out. So th there is ways that people neglect, you know, that they could balance better. Well, and I think a lot of people use that as, as you know, an excuse sometimes too as, oh, well, you know, I'm busy. It's the, you know, it's, it's a go live. You know, everyone's busy. 
at the end of the day. Everyone is busy. Yeah. Everyone has a lot of things going on. And if you're using being busy as an excuse to not do other things, whatever those things are, what's the, what's the, the side effect of that? Is that you are working more, but maybe you're not really working, so to speak. You know, you're going to the office or you're going to clients or you're visiting clients. You know, people recognize when people are stressed out and, 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 and sometimes, you know, to be honest, just miserable. You know, so if you're constantly working, using being busy as an excuse to not take care of yourself or your personal relationships, w- what's the, the impact of that to success, to your business, to your relationships, to your clients? You know, are you using it as an excuse to say, well, I can't do this because the busy season or I can't do this because I'm busy with that. You know, everyone's busy. The kind of the implication of saying that you can't do certain things because you're busy is that, well, I'm busy and you're not busy. You know, it's got to be a balance between how do you really make sure that you have enough time to work on and in your business or whatever your profession is but also take that time to in, in, enjoy life. Well, let's say, you know, people say oftentimes, I'm too busy to go to the gym uh, to go exercise, you know, but then, okay, then you end up going to a doctor and they said, well, your uh, cholesterol is too high or like your overweight or you now need all of a sudden uh, you know pap machine to sleep because you don't get enough oxygen in your body once you reach 40 um, so it's um, you know it's it's gonna catch up with you not making the time but so the one thing to identify is that you're probably not putting priorities and not delegating enough because you could easily probably out you could outsource some of the tasks a um, couple times a week perhaps it's cleaning perhaps it's grocery shopping perhaps it's laundry uh, those are um, really repetitive mechanical tasks that anyone can do and um, they could free up quite a bit of time you know um, or having meals uh, buying that are already pre-cut you know and you can quickly make them it doesn't take longer to than going to restaurant for example because going to restaurants can be kind of like a long pro- you know kind of long process people say well cooking is like a long process but eating healthy let's say we use green chef um, and it's been really great because it's organic and it's comes to your doorstep and it saves time going multiple trips to grocery store and trying to figure out how many carrots do I buy, how many potatoes for this dish, and then also less waste than you don't have yeah. like leftovers. But I also think, you know, people look at, well, I, I don't have time to go to the gym. You know, I, I don't have a time to do, take an hour out of my day to go to the gym. But if you're not using that time at the gym to also manage what you need to get done, you know, so you have to think about, okay, I'm going to be going to the gym for an hour. What can I also accomplish at the gym to help organize my day? Is it, you know, while I'm on the treadmill, I'm thinking about preparing for a meeting or a presentation. If, um, you know, me personally, if I'm on the recumbent bike, I'll look at emails, I'll help organize my day, I'll reply to emails. Um, the other day I had to make a kind of a semi-emergency trip um, to central Vermont. It was about an hour drive each way and I'm like, oh, this is gonna you know, take two hours out of my day. But thinking, well, what can I do during that two hours worth of driving to help alleviate my workload for that day or the, the rest of the week? Is it, you know, making a making calls is it um you know trying to speak with vendors um, follow up on projects that are already going on using that time to do something while you're driving safely and that you can do Don't while you're driving drive. no texting and driving everyone but using the time that you have 
you know, and 24 hours is the great equalizer. That's what everybody has. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Everyone has 24 hours in the day. But how do you use that successfully? And I remember watching a documentary on Bill Gates and they were interviewing one of his executive assistants and they're like, you know, what, what's his quirks? He's got to have quirks. You know, he's, he's Bill Gates. And she said that the two biggest quirks are is he is very particular about how his book bag is set up. He loves to read how his what books and texts and of that nature are in his book. But the second one is that he is always adamant about time. And the interviewer was like, well, what do you mean? Like, elaborate on that time. And she's like, well, think about it. He's, he's Bill Gates. He, anything else, he'll just buy it. You know, he wants a new car, he'll buy it. He wants, you know, a new house, he'll buy it. He wants to travel, he'll just go somewhere. But doesn't matter, you know, someone like him that has endless amounts of money, essentially, is the same as us. He's still got 24 hours in the day. Well, time is um, the most valuable, the most uh, priceless or, you know, thing you can't even put a price on because... Uh, no matter you know who you are you can not buy more of it Uh, so that's again that's where that the location comes and also um, going back to going to the gym for example you can listen to audiobooks on audible and I've been doing this for years like it was if it wasn't for my downtime let's say doing mundane tasks and listening books I would not know as much as I know now because uh, every time I have something that doesn't require full attention I listen to audiobooks, you know, driving in the car, listen audios, uh, YouTube's podcasts, uh, audibles. Um, I've learned so much. I built my business pretty much listening on Audible all the books. Well, and I think, you know, kind of this trend that we're talking about right now is, you know, how to use time effectively, how to maximize your time is, I think, really what we're looking at right now. And being, in the technology field, you, you know, I look at, okay, well, what can help me manage that time better? Whether that's scheduling everything in Outlook or whatever you're using for your calendaring app or using something like uh, ClickUp. Not sponsored by ClickUp. However, I think we'd be okay if they wanted to. We are going to post our Green <laughs> Chef link and Audible, by the way. Check those out. So I'm going to post Maybe eventually uh, post um, this will be sponsored by ClickUp. But ClickUp is a, is, a, is a great tool. You know, there's different buckets, so to speak, where, okay, I know that I need to complete these tasks. Well, where can those tasks be completed? Obviously, some can only be completed in front of a computer in the office. Other tasks, it's like, okay, well, Put that into, um, you know, I'm going to handle that while I'm driving. You know, I'm going to handle that while I'm at the gym or, you know, I like to, you know, around noon to get something to eat, maybe walk around for a little bit. So it's like, okay, well, I'm outside walking, trying to get a little exercise, get the legs moving, get the body moving. But, well, okay, what can I do now? It's like, well, you know, I'm not driving. So <laughs> texting is back in uh, the equation. But what, what can I do? And that having something where you can set up different times of what you're going to be doing during that time can really help you maximize your day and not feel like, okay, well, I have to be in the office to do this. I have to be at the clients to do this. I have to be in front of my computer to do this. Really taking a lot of those tasks and splitting them up so that you can work on them at different parts of the day and still get your 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 wellness taken care of because you know really at the end of the day that's what we're really looking at is how do we stay fit how do we stay active how do we stay mindful and not burn out yeah because once you burn out um then you might just uh click you know you might quit completely um you might what you're doing even people get so burned out they just sell their businesses you know but all you could have done is you could have um, just employed more people, outsourced it, took yourself off day-to-day tasks as much. Um, building a passive income also is a big stress reduction because then you know, hey, if I step off my main role, if I'm fired or 
if my business doesn't do well, depending whether you know you're working in a company or running a business or but it creates that security sense which can be a big um stress for some people you know because if you're uncertain about what would happen and so investing so that's why like health um relationships and money is all connected it's one big piece because you want to be happy pretty much you want to have those most of those things taken care of not to say that you can be happy if you don't have investments or uh, financial success you definitely can but you know it's less likely well i think it goes you know both ways money has different meanings to different people so you know some people you know investments and passive income that's what they want in their life you know other people and i think covid was one thing that really solidified this for a lot of people was how much money do i really need you know how much money do i really need to be happy in life and for some of those people it was you know a lot of money you know they wanted a lot of money they wanted to be very successful they wanted to fly business class everywhere they wanted to uh, you know go on lavish trips um, you know a running joke my friends and I had in high school was you know I'm gonna live in a van down by the river and it was kind of a joke you know it's like oh well, you're gonna be stuck in a van down in, by the river and now that's almost the, the dream for some I people. think that's the Vermont thing <laughs> you never know so I, I think that it's really finding what makes sense to you. What makes, how much money do you really need? And then how do you get that amount of money? Yeah, you have to find uh, your comfort. Mm -hmm. However, um, oftentimes what happens is, at least that happened with me, was that when I was not making a lot of money, I'm an immigrant, so I had very hard time when I first moved to US trying to make it uh, as a musician, professional musician, and then I transitioned into wellness and eventually unexpectedly never planned to own a spa, but now have two locations in Burlington and South Burlington, Vermont, and even looking potentially into franchising. So. What life takes you to road you never plan with, but you know, I was thinking to myself, well, if I just make uh, fifty thousand a year, um, and given you know, in my country, money is a little different value in Europe. You know, that salary would be like a good amount of money. But now looking back, you know, now there's no way I can be happy just with that. You know, at my age. Um, so especially I love to get back. I love to help other people and I love to build things and you can't build things with that amount. You know, you need to buy buildings like office or ren renovate things. You need money, you need capital. So I know personally for me that that amount, you know, but looking back, that's what I thought. And so once you reach that amount, then you need, okay, then I need 100,000. Now I need 200,000. And eventually I need like half a million because I want to build this. I want to create this franchise. I want to do that, you know, because um, for me, it's really also not about the money. It's about what I can do with the money. It's not about stashing it away somewhere. It's about using helping improving the communities and in terms people around me lives uh, but you know it changes over time but also so it's good to remember then to center back to see what you did accomplish and then if you like what you're doing you can keep on doing but with less stress but i think it's you know it's also important to look at it from an out, outside perspective if you have a number in mind that that's what you want to, to make you happy, that's what you think is going to be able to get you to that next goal. That, that's great. Setting goals and achieving them and breaking those goals, that's awesome. But at the same time, your goals are not necessarily what other people's goals are. Some people's goals are going to be different, clearly, than what yours are. 
and that's okay. Knowing that other people's goals yeah. and they're reaching them, that's what they want. That's what they want to be successful in life. And, you know, real estate investing is not for everyone. Being a business owner is not for everyone. Some people find that renting and having a very easy lifestyle where they can quickly pick up and go somewhere else or, yeah. or um, you know, they want to live very frugally and, you know, spend it on experiences or they just don't want the hassle. You know, they don't want the hassle of dealing with a business and the nuances of it. Well, yeah. Or, um, you know, with with real estate investing, you know, I think there's a little bit of a misnomer with, well, it's passive. You know, yeah. I need more passive income. You know, if I have $100,000 in passive income, you know, that, that, will, that will be great. It, I don't disagree with you, you know. There's tons of people that, yeah, I'll take $100,000 in passive income anytime. But there's very, very, very few things in this world that are truly passive. And I think a lot of people get kind of caught up in a lot of these videos that they watch on YouTube about, hey, I'm making $25,000 a month in passive income doing drop shipping. And of course, there are people doing that. There's no question in it. But the vast majority of people that's not the case but it's yeah i mean it's not passive nothing is 100 percent passive and also i have to say those quick rich get rich quick schemes they usually only work for a short time if you don't have like a strong foundation a business that built on like good integrity mm -hmm. and values and actually really helping people with your services or products and you're just flipping something you know that's usually not like uh it's Super. not sustainable, you know. If you want to be, you know, constantly hunting for that quick money that, that, is, that is flippable, as kind of Yolita said, that's where, you know, something like drop shipping, it's, it's a product that it, it's disposable. It's going to be good for two, three months, and then you're going to have to be off to the next one. And it can almost be more stressful trying to constantly no, source it is. Yeah. and find you know it's a full-time job it's not passive yeah exactly you know so if you can really you know if you value your brand you value your merchandise you know so if you can build that brand and build value that is maybe not quick income it might not be a hot item but like that's something what people need long term exactly exactly yeah uh, but you know, it's um, it's it's all c going back to um, deciding like what's best for you. You know, like Nicholas said, might not be for everyone to do um, certain type of investing or certain type of um, you know employment uh, business. Um, it's you know. As we as we get older, we we start to recognize what our characters is like, what we gravitate towards. You know, when I was in my twenties, I did not knew that I wanted to be entrepreneur. I thought I wanted to be a musician. You know, and then I realized, no, I actually, you know, once I uh, became self employed as a massage therapist, I realized, wow, I really like the business aspect of this, and I want to. Mm -hmm grow and do it for other people and employ people because it's fun for me and I'm providing a nice place to work at because I understand from the perspective of doing it, having done it myself, mm -hmm. those services. So, um, yeah, it's. And I think that's with anything, you know, a lot of people get into just say Amazon as an example, I'm going to sell products on Amazon. I'm going to sell a lot of products and, you know, I'm, I'm going to make bank and re retire early. <laughs> and of course, there's obviously people doing that. But, you know, some people get into it and they're like, you know what? I really don't like the Amazon aspect of it, but I really like logistics. So I'm going to form a logistics company. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to form a, a 3PL. I'm going to do a prep center. Um, I'm going to build my business or my wealth around Amazon. You know, all the ancillary services that go into driving sales or a company on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, or even software mm -hmm. 
uh, different software solutions for those type of businesses. But um, it, it, the other the other thing about what can make you happier and less stressful, you know, giving back, volunteering, um, putting some time aside for um, ch charities that you believe in, um, causes that you believe in. Uh, for me, it's for example, I'm passionate about helping other young women to uh, believe in themselves. Also, helping other immigrants to um, that you know come to us looking for better life, um, and that 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 can be very fulfilling and uh, worthwhile to to know what you you know what what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing for. Um, but at the same time, and then, you know, not forgetting your sleep and sleep is very important. I actually stopped drinking coffee and I just feel like I don't need it anymore. Now I have the same amount of energy as I, I used to. I have not stopped drinking coffee. <laughs> I know. And I don't know if I will ever stop drinking coffee. But one thing that I want to add in is, you know, using the skills that you have for your business in, in, in a philanthropic way, if I pronounce that correctly. But, you know, as a technology person, everyone needs an IT guy. Everyone needs an IT guy. Everyone needs a mechanic. Everyone needs, you know, a finance person, etc. But how can you leverage your skills to help other people? And that might be, you know, helping a nonprofit with some, you know, IT things that they need done and, you know, doing it instead of for payment for a handshake, you know, or um, how can you donate some of your services to help maybe a nonprofit get started? Maybe they need some web hosting. Maybe they just need help just getting started, getting set up with Microsoft 365, leveraging your skills to help someone else get set up but then also your knowledge to help them better utilize their, their, their spend, you know, using Microsoft as an example. Great programs out there for Office 365 if you're a nonprofit. You're going to put the link down, I'll, affiliate link. Perhaps put a link down in the, in the, the bio here for, um, you know, services. But, you know, understanding what's out there can be daunting, you know, for someone to get started. Using your skills to help them get started and help them get going, you know, can be that giving back aspect of things. Yes. Um, the other thing, uh, what I, I think we're going to wrap up here, mm -hmm. um, our first episode in a couple minutes here. But what I would want to say is that um, money is replaceable and there is an a, a unlimited amount of money in the world. Uh, what we don't have is the time. We don't have unlimited time and we don't have unlimited health. Um, so you know what can make you more financially successful is not being afraid to not be financially successful. And let me explain. Um, taking risks and knowing that, okay, um, I have no stress about this because I know, okay, if it fails, I can, I still have my health. I still have my relationship. I still have my family. And, um, and I, because I was, you know, not wasting time, I can still redo, I can still redo that whatever um, business deal or whatever I was trying to accomplish because you you can always get more money. You can always redo. There's many examples of people that went bankrupt, successful people, you know. Um, they, they have little stress about money investing and if they fail, they just get up and do it again. And I've failed in the past too. I've tried like some other businesses too. And that actually makes you better. So never be afraid. Don't stress too much about failing, losing money, because guess what? You can, you have come up with new idea and you can make it all back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I have done the same thing. You know, I've, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars have been spent on essentially 
not necessarily a failed business, but, you know, a business that didn't really come to fru- fruition, you know, if, we, if that's the right way of pronouncing it. But I you got up, experience. I make up words sometimes. But the thing is, is, you know, that experience of, you know, dealing with vendors overseas, dealing with logistics companies, how are you going to import that product into the United States? You know, having to pivot, having to deal with designers, with um, material shortfalls, with, uh, you know, global pandemics, um, labor shortage, all that experience really brings, you know, that, that, that monetary loss is maybe not really a monetary loss, so to speak. Maybe the not thinking of it as losing thousands and thousands of dollars, but more as... Paying for education. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's the way I looked when Mm -hmm. I was building my business enough. I would, you know, made a bad decision perhaps. Oh, like I spend money on this like marketing campaign and it's like, uh, didn't do that well. Well, guess what? Now you know not to do that again. Mm-hmm. It's education, you know, yep. and you'll do better next time. Yep. So we we would like to again remind you, please give us a rating. Uh, share this with your friends. Uh, leave us some comments if there's certain topics you would like us to talk about next time we will try to do here at least once a month maybe perhaps bi-weekly we'll see Mm -hmm. how we can work this up but uh please subscribe um and we hope to have some guests in the future as well to keep it fun for you guys special guests yes Uh, well both in wellness Mm -hmm. and wealth and financial and fitness industries so great all right. Well, have a brilliant day. Thank you for listening and watching. Follow us YouTube and Spotify and iTunes.